Welcome to Easy Sourdough Bread. So I'm gonna show you in this video how to make a beautiful bread just like this, using simple ingredients. Sourdough bread, in essence, I'm gonna show you the transformative process of simple flour, water, salt to create beautiful bread like this. This is beautiful, this is magical, and if anyone has more time in their hands, this is so worthwhile doing. Okay, first step, you're gonna need a large mixing bowl like that. Into that, I have lukewarm water. I have 325 milliliters. It's important that you have it lukewarm because it's often said there's two secret ingredients with sourdough. You have time and you have temperature. And ideal fermentation occurs when it's between 24 and 27 degrees Celsius. So lukewarm is great to start with. Into that, I'm adding 11 grams of salt. Get your hand and just give it a nice stir just to disperse that salt so it'll go through the bread beautifully. Uh, enter the sourdough mother or the levam. So mine is four years old. It's actually technically older than my youngest son, Ned. Uh, it's like a pet. It's something that's beautiful and I'd highly recommend you doing and making. Very easy to make your own. Uh, down below in the description bar, there's a link with how to start your own sourdough mother. Check it out. So in this recipe, I'm gonna be adding 150 grams of sourdough mother. So it's really important that your sourdough mother floats, which means that it's active and it's vibrant and it's ready to bake bread. So when I pour this in, it's really important that I see it float. See the way that's lovely and buoyant and when I press it, it just bounces back up. So what I'm gonna do now, don't worry, your mother isn't gonna die because there's salt in the water. It's totally, take your hand like a claw and I'm gonna disperse this throughout our lukewarm water and salt. Next step, we're gonna add our flour. I'm basing this bread on 50% wholemeal flour, 50% white. Most of the sourdough people eat are predominantly white. What's really important in modern day society is that we all get more fiber. Wholemeal flour has a lot more fiber. Uh, I have 250 grams of whole wheat flour. In it goes. And I have 250 grams of just white flour. Some people might want to make it 100% white, that's cool. Some people want to make 100% wholemeal. Find out what works for you. This works for me, it's, it's kind of that middle point. If I go 100% wholemeal, my kids won't really eat it. If I go 100% white, I don't want them having that because it's not as healthy. So I found the middle ground in that this is the bread that I make for my family. Get your hand like a claw, in it goes, and we're going to mix it through. So you'll see right now it's a bit of a shaggy mess. Uh, don't worry, just make sure you've incorporated all the flour, water, salt. I'm gonna pour it out on the counter. So there are two things that we really wanna develop here. We wanna develop gluten. Gluten is the elasticity, and we also wanna encourage fermentation. Fermentation, in essence, is when the yeast eat the starch in the flour and they give off carbon dioxide, and that's the air, in essence. The gluten is the, the activated kind of elasticity of the dough that will hold and contain the carbon dioxide. So we're gonna develop gluten now. I'm gonna lead it for eight minutes. Kneading is a wonderful stress relieving process. Right now you might go in such a sticky dough. Ugh. Don't worry, this will all come together and it's beautiful, it's a real lovely process. So in terms of kneading, there's many ways to do it. Don't get caught up in which one's perfect and how do you do it. In essence, we're trying to push the water and the flour together to activate the two protein strands to link together so there's elasticity in our dough. You'll know when you have developed enough gluten when you pass the window pane test. So when I pick up my dough like this, I should be able to open it up and see the light coming through without it ripping. So what, you see that right there? I've developed enough gluten. So it's, got a, it's gone from a nice shaggy mess to where there's a bit of gluten development now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one fold and I'm gonna leave it to do its first proof. So I'm gonna stretch my dough out I'm simply gonna fold it over, fold it back, fold it underneath, fold it over. Don't get too worried. In essence, I'm just creating a bit of structure and then I'm just gonna bring it together. Don't worry too much about the shape. Bring it up and we're gonna put it in the, ba in the bowl. So I'm gonna put a lid on top of that now. And the reason why I'm putting the lid is just to stop any moisture loss and to stop it from developing a crust. I'm gonna leave that sit and ferment or to proof for two to three hours. Ideally, the temperature is between 24 and 27 degrees Celsius, because that's when fermentation is most active. So I've let that one proof or rise for two hours. Uh, if your room temperature is below 24 degrees, you're gonna have to leave it for longer, for possibly four, five, even six hours. Um, so what you're looking for is that it's kind of risen by about a third. It's kind of lost that tight doughiness where there's a bit of aeration in it. 
Um, I'm going to pour mine out now and you'll see. While you're pouring it out, be really careful. We don't want to lose any of that air that we've worked hard to, de to kind of develop. So often I would use a dough scraper. I forgot mine today, but just come in and just use, this can simply be used as a dough scraper. You're just kind of helping release it from the bottom of the bowl. Okay, cool. So my dough has aerated. You see the way it's tapered around the edges. It's no longer this kind of loose mess. Um, I'm going to be gentle. There's no flour on my work surface here. So what I'm going to do is I want to shape it here, shape it and develop surface tension, and then I'm going to put it in the Banneton basket or my proofing basket for its final rise. So shaping. What I like to do is I like to take my dough, stretch it out this way, stretch it out this way, stretch it out that way. First thing, take the top down, bring it to the middle. Next one, take the top down, bring it to the middle. Next one, bring the top out, bring it to the middle. Left side out, bring it to the middle. And then I'm gonna fold it over on itself again. Take it down like this. This bit now is fun. Don't worry about what happened exactly what. Fold it around, the, the act of folding, you're gonna bring it in so that it, it has more structure, it has more tension, and you're gonna have more, get more this shape in your bread. So now what I'm gonna do is here, I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna develop surface tension so I'm, pulling it around and I'm pulling it back. I'm developing surface tension on the front of the dough. It's also slightly degassing the dough, so it means there's gonna be a more even distribution of air pockets. Next step, I'm gonna take my Banneton basket or my proofing basket and I'm gonna just put flour around it. If you don't have a Banneton basket, simply take a bowl of a similar size, take a tea towel and just dust it with flour and that will work just the same. The Banneton basket will give you these nice ridges if that's what you're looking for. So I'm just simply taking flour and I'm just gonna make sure it goes in and out of all these little pockets here. Next step, take a little bit of flour and just cover the top of it. Just spread it around. Just make sure we've all that tension, that nice bit of tension in there. And I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to put it nose side down. And I'm going to take a little bit of flour and just put it all over the back. Because that ultimately is going to be the part that we're going to bake with. So I'm going to put the lid on that and leave this to ferment for about five to six hours at a temperature of 24 to 27 degrees. If your room is cooler, it's going to take a little bit longer. It might take eight to 12 hours. If in the middle of this, you need to go to bed and you're like, this sourdough is taking over my life, don't worry, you can be in control of your sourdough. Just simply put your dough into the fridge. That's known as retarding your dough because the fridge typically is below five degrees. So it's gonna slow down the fermentation process. It's like the brakes on it. Then in the morning, take it out and just continue that fermentation process again. So I let that rise for about four to six hours. I know that sounds really, really vague and you're kind of like four to six hours is a huge difference. Don't worry. What you're looking for is that your bread has risen again, possibly by about another third. And when I press it in here, it bounces back, but it still leaves a slight indent. So I'm gonna show you how to use a Dutch oven to get this wonderful crispy crust. So Dutch oven is a simple name for a cast iron casserole dish. So I've preheated mine in the oven for at 250 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes until it's piping hot. So this is my Dutch oven. It's piping hot, so just be really, really careful. I'm going to take the lid off and leave it out. Check out that heat. What I like to do is just to make sure it hasn't stuck anywhere, I slowly just release it from the edges just to make sure. We put a lot of love into this bread. We just want to make sure it, we get the best out of it. So I'm going to turn, land it in my hand. Just be gentle here and I'm just going to drop it in. Next step for scoring. Many people use a razor blade. I don't have one. I'm using a scissors. Very simple, very accessible. In the old days, there used to be a communal oven, and this is a way, it's like the baker's signature. Don't worry, there's gonna be wonderful oven spring now. It's gonna pop up and puff up beautifully. So I'm gonna pop that in, 250 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. So I know I briefly brushed over the term oven spring. What happens is the Dutch oven, there's a huge amount of thermal mass in that cast iron pot. And once it hits the base of it and the lid's on, it just that extra surge of heat just makes things go poosh. The water wants to start evaporating. And because the Dutch oven is sealed, any water that starts to evaporate hits the lid and is actually re redistributed so it's steamed. So we get this wonderful, crispy, blistered crust. So that's why a Dutch oven is incredible for getting beautiful, professional looking sourdough bread at home. 
So it's been in the oven for 20 minutes at 250 degrees. Have a look here to see oven spring. Boom. See the way it's puffed up a lot, it looks great. I'm gonna pop it back in. I'm gonna reduce the temperature to 200 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna bake it for 15 minutes until it caramelizes and goes so beautiful on the crust. So it's been in the oven for 15 minutes. It smells amazing. Check this beauty out. Oh, look at that. Absolutely magnificent. Uh, well worth getting a Dutch oven if you can. So just to show you're there, take her out. Just be careful, she's really hot. So you see that there, just what a little beauty. So in France, they always say never eat hot bread. Part of the reason, if I was to cut this open now, the crumb or the inside of the bread hasn't cooled and the structure isn't fully formed. So ideally, I'd leave this sit for even half an hour. However, it is phenomenal when you eat hot bread. So it's always a trade-off, but it's worthwhile at least even leaving for 15 minutes. So while that's cooling, I'm gonna just show you how to cook beautiful sourdough bread at home without a Dutch oven. First step, I have a baking tray. It's been in the oven for obviously about 30 minutes. It's really, really piping hot. I'm gonna take it out. I turn it upside down, take a little bit of flour, and I pop some flour on top of it just so it doesn't stick. Be careful there. Next step, my bread. I'm gonna take it out again, same method. Just take a little spoon and just make sure it doesn't stick. Sometimes if you didn't kind of flour properly, it might stick slightly. Pop it down and just carefully, oh, there we are, boom, take her out. Take our scissors and score it. I'm gonna just go for just a traditional. Next step, take a misting bottle and we're just gonna mist around the outside. Open her up. While it's in there, I'm just gonna give it a nice mist. Again, just so the steam stays in the oven. Last and final step here is I have a bowl of ice here. I'm just gonna take four or five ice cubes and I'm just simply gonna pop them down the bottom here. They're gonna create loads of steam. So the oven is at 250 degrees. I'm gonna bake that for 20 minutes in Kirsch and oven spring in that lovely crispy crust. So after 20 minutes, I reduced the temperature down to 200 degrees Celsius and I put the remaining ice in. So here we are, the moment of glory, the no Dutch oven sourdough bread. Woo! Okay, obviously it's a little bit overwhelming or underwhelming. Didn't bake so evenly, there's a little few hot spots, kind of came out a little from the bottom. Um, when compared to this, it's quite a, a good advert to why one should use a Dutch oven. I've never found this method to result in the most beautiful looking bread. It will still taste great and the crumb will still be lovely inside. So, ba basic rule of thumb, this will work fine for sourdough, but don't expect results like this. It's quite hard to get results like this without a Dutch oven. So, without further ado, let me reveal the crumb and the crust of this bread. Boom, boom. So lovely open crumb, quite nice and spongy. Smells amazing, beautiful. So that's a 50, 50% 50 wholemeal to white. Beautiful, simple sourdough. It's an incredibly beautiful process. It's something that I bake almost every day. Uh, it's something that I love and I couldn't recommend more. My family adore it, I adore it. Uh, and I think if you give it a bit of attention and love, you could one day adore it too. Do check out down below our little very easy how to make your sourdough uh, mother at home guide, link down below. Thanks for watching this, thanks for being part of the community and sending lots of love. We have started doing YouTube stories, so do check them out and please tag us on social media if you do make sourdough bread like this. Thanks Emil, cheers. Uh, I'm ge genuinely surprised that the bread cooked without a Dutch oven probably has a nicer interior, just nicer, bigger open air, bigger crumb, more kind of air distribution. Um, just looks a little better, mad, didn't expect that at all.